want to show you today a common problem with young chainmail pianos. Check out how the hammers block. And when you try and resolve the problem, it basically can't be resolved. See that crack there? That action bracket has grown, and the two major components of the action, the hammer and the whipping, have spread apart from each other, making it so it can't be regulated. This piano, I think, was made in 1989, but Young Cheng says only pianos 90 to 98 were affected. To fix the problem, we basically have to change the brackets. Sounds simple enough, but sometimes it's a real headache. Depending on how much adjustment has been done to the action, trying to correct things as they've gone out of regulation, and also how much have those brackets grown and increased their size, that can sometimes strip screw holes or make the action fit really tightly. <laughs> Luckily, this piano didn't have any stripped screws, but it's definitely tight. It's stuck because it's <laughs> Yeah, I can't even get it out of this one side. It's yeah, tight. yeah, I make mistakes too. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Luckily, nothing is damaged. Too close. That. Screws off. So we're basically removing all the screws on the stack. There's a set of top screws and front screws to that hammer rail, and then that can be removed independently. Once you have that aside, you can loosen all the whip and rail screws. Now it's the whip and rail that can move forward and back. This is the thing that moves. It's like splitting apart from itself and rolling. So then these two come apart from each other and that increases the action spread. Huh. Which is no bueno. No bueno. Are you going to tell the old ones apart from the new ones? The color. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> Well, that's you. Know, the fact that you mentioned that, though, you just you come across an old young chain. Right. Regulations all, whatever. If you look, you see this color, it's got that problem. Okay. That's how you know. Yep. This is silver color. Interesting. Yeah. When you order your brackets, you have to be sure to get the right sizes, so you need a chance to measure the brackets that are existing on the piano before you order. Now, this whole, yeah, they're slightly different. Now, in a straightforward job, I should be able to switch the old brackets out for the new ones just like I'm doing here, put everything together, and it should fit. But as you'll see, that didn't quite work out with this piano. I've had it go both ways, and this is a job that I don't see often enough to have really refined the process, but hopefully this video will help with that. See right there, the end bracket's too long for the notch. I need to chisel out some material so that I can make it uh, wide enough for the foot of that bracket. Chiseling out material's not so bad. I don't mind doing that. But what we get into a little later is a little bit more tricky. I could have put the brackets on here first. You know, just the bracket. You do want these notches for the bracket feet to be tight on the feet so that it locates the action properly each time it's unscrewed and screwed back in. So you don't want to remove too much, but you have to remove enough that it'll fit. We'll just get the other side here. This is really important to this job. You need these goldfish crackers. The breath nuts. Very important. Alright, so. Now that I've got those end bracket uh, slots adjusted, 
They fit just right. Look at the height. This is another issue because the screws usually will have a lock washer and another washer underneath that. But the new brackets are a lot taller there, so you either need to remove those washers, and if you still can't get enough screw in the wood, you might need to get longer screws. The screw has to bite into the cleats deep enough so that it won't strip out and it'll hold the action securely in place so that you can have a stable regulation. As I started putting this one together, I noticed uh, the hammer line in the middle is sagging and the ends are up. Something's not quite right. Trying to figure it out, I noticed the angled screws on the front were not going into the old holes. They weren't aligning right. Sometimes you just gotta sit and think through a problem, you know? So putting it in the old hole on the front, like I notice that uh, we need to reposition some holes. So doing that requires some hardwood plugs, <clears throat> or I mean it doesn't have to be hardwood, but in this case I had some hardwood toothpicks, some glue, and I put several, several toothpicks into the hole and then chiseled it flat. You can't have anything sticking up underneath that bracket foot or it'll change the height of the action and your regulation. So while the glue is drying, might as well clean the piano, lubricate it, right? That always helps. So I want to mark where the new hole has to go now that I've filled the old hole with wood and glue. So I want to put everything in place with the end brackets secured where they're going to be. Here I'll make a punch where I'm going to drill in both cleats. Success. Normally I would put the back straight screw in first and the angle screw on the front last. That's not cool. No, the screw no, kept no. wanting to miss the old hole. No. The old hole. So I had to remove all the screws and start again putting in those angle screws first. Just to make sure it would work out. Okay, that's the original hole in there. <laughs> Once those angled screws were in, I wanted to loosen all the screws securing the rails so that I could reset the rails in a way that wouldn't cause too much tension on the feet. Once the screws are loosened on the rails, I'll tighten all the feet screws and then re-tighten the rail screws. Set action spread to proper measurement. Adjust spread hammer center pin to whip and center pin with whip and rail screw. Action spread should be set to 112.5 millimeters. So what should our action spread be? 112.5 millimeters. Okay, so what are we setting this to? 112.5 millimeters. Okay, what are the two endpoints? Um, I'm filming them right now as a hint. On the bracket? Uh-huh. Here? I don't know. What? No. Oh, you didn't read. Oh, you don't know what action spread is. No. Oh, that's important. Here, it's uh, this center pin. Mm -hmm. The middle of that center pin to the middle of that center pin. Okay. See how those are two independent that's rails spread. and parts? Gotcha. See how it spreads it or puts it closer? Mm -hmm. So right now it's like totally wrong because it's like rubbing against there, right? Yeah. So we definitely got to move it back and we've got room to do it. 
<laughs> so where's action spin? This pin to this pin. Okay. Gotta go right in the middle of it. And we're guessing it's gonna be way too small right now. Yep, a hundred eight something. Eight, yeah. Okay, we're gonna set the ends, the end points first, okay? So you're gonna just make sure all the screws are loose and we're just gonna move this end of the rail right here and, and move it just and then tighten that screw. And do the same on the other end. This distance has to be set exactly. Okay. okay. This is gonna, I forget I got. Just clamp that puppy down. And your corners for sure in the middle of that one? Yeah. Okay. Good. So now, now just do the other end point. Yeah, make sure the middles are loose. This one's about... 112. I don't think I quite got the 0.5. Okay, we'll get it. It's important. With the ends set exactly, the middle should follow. But it doesn't always do that. You might need to push your pole and tighten sure. in the middle. Check. Wherever you can get the best view. Okay. Okay. Notice the blow distance is different now that you moved that. Yep. Now that you moved it, they're all way high above the rest yep. cushions. See that? Yep. Yeah. But the spread is correct, so now we gotta do some regulation. <laughs> Quick regulation to make it work. Okay. We'll see where let off is. Um, it's probably like low or lower. So go ahead and throw that in. Okay, now give us a perfect demonstration of how you clear the glide bolts. Okay. And you don't wreck the case. There's brass studs underneath the action frame that will hit the finish if you're not careful. You have to lift them slightly and push them past the bump, then lower the action and push it in the rest of the way. There's let off. It's like you don't feel it. Because of where drop is and everything. Okay. But it's not, it's not, uh, and it's like, really... it's not double striking, right? Is that let off too far too? No, it's way too low. I mean, too, yeah, that's what I meant. It's way too, too low. Far. And so we got a lot of aftertouch and drop is so high that you're not even seeing drop. Right. I always like to test the strike point on a piano as it improves the sound a lot. Once I get the strike point set, then I can do some regulation. The customer's budget wasn't as high as I would have liked to have done a better job, so I had to prioritize my time. It's always important to play the piano, check and see if there's anything that rubs, clicks, anything like that. In this case, uh, one note was playing two notes. Because of the alignment of that weapon. It's hitting like both. See that? So I'm gonna scoot this guy over. I think it might have been the, the repaired one. Okay, that and screwed him over. Was it two? Just watching only one move. See that? I noticed something rattling around in there. This is a way you can kind of clean an action out of debris and objects that might be interfering. Should be clean. 
This part is called the key upstop rail, and really it's for when the piano is put up on its side for moving and shipping. You need to make sure though that the rail is set high enough that the keys are free and that it's not pushing the keys down. Always back turn these screws until they pop in the threads before turning them in. That way you won't end up with a stripped screw hole. I've included some images of documents that'll be really helpful for you in overcoming the three main challenges of this job. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you tune in next time.